Welcome to the Irish Craft Beer Show. I'm Brian Condren and I'm joined by a good friend Nigel Comerford. And we're very excited to have a special guest here all the way from Twin Cities in Minnesota, Chip Walton. Woo! Chop and brew. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. Irish for Irish. Brew show for, for show. For show. <laughs> <laughs> So right now we're drinking my foreign export stout, which is kind of a stand-in because the beer we're here to talk about, we've known that. <laughs> so uh, someone drank it off. Someone's Very tasting notes. I mean, it's not what we're here to talk about today, but I'm, I'm quite happy with how this oh, yeah. turned out. I mean, it has what commercial examples, premier examples have a little bit of that high fruit, yeah. dark fruit, raspberry, right, plum. Can, yeah. But then kind of like bit just of a little spice. on the edge of spicy, right? A little bit of spiciness, and I, I get a bit of vanilla as well when I drink this. Where does that come from? The uh, malt? I think it's, it's from the malt. It's roasted barley and chocolate malt in this. Yeast was a bit of a curse. Yeast a bit, though, yeah, right? I used the uh, SO4 dry yeast in this. The recipe called for Nottingham, which is more of a clean, cleaner yeast. Didn't have any on stock, used SO4. It turned out well. It made this lovely body. For it is a lovely body, yeah. And it gives a great presentation and appearance. Too. Mm. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> We're to talk about the, the, the very first transatlantic collaboration <laughs> brew day. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> first? <laughs> <laughs> that the Irish Craft Beer Show took. I, I, I don't know, maybe there's some other podcast I don't know about that did one before us. But So, Chip was over for BrewCon 2016, National Homebrew Club BrewCon. Excellent day. Everyone enjoyed ourselves. Uh, Chip gave a presentation on what was your presentation title again? Eccentric Brewing. Eccentric Brewing. And kind of because cabin baggage is a bit difficult uh, for you to bring beer yeah. over, we decided that Chip would sort out a recipe and myself and Nigel would brew this. We recorded a video. We'll go take a look at that now and then we'll come here and we'll talk about beer. Okay, first things first, I'm going to be weighing up the grist. Now the base malt for this is a Munich malt and we're using around 2.3 kilos of Munich malt. Okay, on to speciality malt. Next we have cararai. Roasted barley need 270 grams of roasted barley. 170 grams of chocolate rye. And that's our grist. Oh, what temperature is that for Frank? Well, it's pretty darn close. 69, so... We did that one for 69 and it's hitting 69.8. Yes. So... Give that a little stir. Is that enough water? Yeah, what do we say? 8 liters? Yeah, that's about 8 liters. Yeah, so we're going to say 8.5 liters. So, uh, beer smith's real purpose is here, so uh, beer smith says we can stop the clock. Start the clock. First. I'll, I'll start my, stop my start point. <laughs> That's pretty damn close. Yeah. Perfect. Three, two, one. How do you keep your cardboard so clean? <laughs> So that is 15 grams. Thirteen. Fourteen. Sixteen. That's good enough. Fuck that is. Thank you. 
And so we have that's 24 liters pre boil volume. We wanted 21 post boil volume. The watch pot never boils, so the little watch pot boils over. And then we just wait for the boil to restart. That looks like it's coming back to the boil quick enough. What are we going to call it? The boil has started. 15 minutes for boil clock edition. We need our 15 minute chiller edition. Lactose and coffee So lactose, we were doing 12 grams per liter and we're swimming a 21 liter batch, so that's about 250 grams. So. So that brew day looked pretty cool. I'm glad that you guys took inspiration. The idea was rye stout with espresso, uh, stout with some rye influences. Um, they were chocolate and crystal rye, correct? Chocolate rye, yeah. Um, and then the espresso at Flame Out. So my version at home turned out, um, I'm just gonna compare it to, it turned out drier, felt a little lighter bodied uh, and way more coffee for better or for worse. Yeah. It was definitely more coffee out of the gate than I wanted. So a month and a half in was when I felt like it kind of hit that sweet spot. No. Um, but I kind of compared it more to like a table porter throughout the process, mm -hmm. a session porter. Okay. Um, I don't know if we want to launch into the tasting notes for your guys. <laughs> I felt was more medium bodied, yeah. almost more enjoyable because it was espresso within a rice stout, not a rice stout hidden under espresso. Yeah. I liked it. I think the invert sugar has something to do with it. I could not find invert sugar, so I used the clearest of the clear Belgian candy syrups, and well, we all know that that goes this, just this, right away. This is our sugar man here. You, so. Sugar man. Sugar, sugar man. man. Oh, sugar right. daddy. Hashtag sugar man. <laughs> but the sugar was just um, just a normal table sugar that was uh, darkened up, and then there was citric acid added, added to it. Follow the instructions found online for them. You made invert sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so we kind of matched it to the EVC, the colour of what I could find online for the invert sugar. It added a lot of like um, burnt caramelly kind of, mm -hmm. and I, I pick up a little bit of it in the final beer. I only got this much of the final beer yesterday because it disappeared pretty quick. <laughs> but yesterday was the first time tasting, so yeah, I was happy. And I feel like that might be partly to uh, not blame, but credit with that more full body because that stuff's not going to ferment out right in a good yeah. way does that barclay perkins recipe for me yeah, i think it was the okay. yeah, yeah. I'm sure exactly yeah. shout yeah. out shut up about barclay perkins <laughs> so the, the recipe in that so say with the, the invert sugar we had uh, 300 grams of invert sugar in this there was 250 grams of uh, lactose uh the the grist 2.3 kilos of Munich malt with 400 grams of caramel rye, 150 grams of roasted barley, and 170 grams of chocolate rye. You gave us everything in percentages. We transferred it into oh. grams because we don't understand your weird rods and hogshead system <laughs> of US customary units. So, oh yeah, 15 grams of Magnum hops, 60 minutes. So that was the recipe. I wasn't too happy with how it, how it turned out. Now I was, I was a little bit worried because I was I was monitoring the fermentation and it took about thirty six hours before it really kicked off. Yeast we used the call for dry yeast. I hadn't done on, on hand, so Nigel. <laughs> it was uh, a quick starter, mate. Because someone forgot to order the yeast. Someone forgot to order the yeast. Yeah, chip. Yeah, chip. So it called for dry yeast. We used uh, what was this? Uh, WLP007. Is that the London Ale yes. or Yeah, London Ale or British Ale. English, I think London, I English, British, one yeah. of those. Added nice and <laughs> bit of character, drops very clear. Yeah. All so that's good. Yeah, 36 hours before the fermentation took off, I was very worried. When it took off, it was over very quickly as well. I'd say within three or four days, it had died down. Final gravity was uh, 1019, but this was, that's quite high due to the lactose. Like it worked out, like it was sub 4% beer. I don't have the original gravity written down here, so I can't remember it, but it was definitely sub 4%. I think mine was 16. 10, 10, 10, 16 was the final 10, 38 to 10, 16. Yeah, maybe? So 38, yeah. 10, 40. 40, yeah. But so that could also be the invert sugar yeah. too, because parts of that aren't going to go anywhere yeah. once it's that dark, right? Mm. Two points. Yeah, it'll still get a bit. Mm. I like that. We can't get that. The mm -hmm. only time I've ever seen it is when we've make your own. Our pro brewers at Summit have used it and it comes in these giant bricks. And they learn the hard way once that you can't leave those in the cooler till the day you need them or it's like anvil splitting concrete so the second time he used it he set them into the brew house early in the morning and by the time it was top ready to go it was like smack and you open it and it's just like this gelatinous sugary substance coming out of these bricks so sticky yeah when i was making that i kind of it's like a boil over kind of took it off for one minute and the whole kitchen smells so it smells like just burnt sugar, basically what it was, but it was tasty. Yeah. Huh. No, translate to tale of two beers, right? I yeah. mean, proof positive that just a couple of little things change the character of a beer. Yeah. What this beer is all about, I think, was the espresso, the coffee. I mean, that's you had to get the espresso in into the end. I really liked the suggestion for adding coffee because we brewed coffee starts many times and it always ends up just tasting like either bad over extracted cold coffee when you do it but I've added coffee into secondary I've drawn it into the, uh, the full boil what this called for was it to be added after flame out ACF whirlpool time bag full of coffee was suspended in the boil for five minutes and then taken out and that was yeah that if was you know of the hot stand technique you yeah. could call this a coffee stand coffee stand coffee we used we used a local roast this is what I drink for with my breakfast so why uh why mess with a bad thing this was coffee house lane of waterford medium dark roast for smooth yet intense coffee experience it's very tasty coffee maybe i could have gone for a stronger one for the yeah give it a more espresso notes rather than morning cup of coffee notes but you know you really want to go with a coffee that you like to drink normally yeah and that's what i went with the notes that came through initially i thought that it uh it did taste like uh, an old cup of coffee you'd left out but that, that kind of mellowed out as it got older this was brewed about three weeks before we sent it to brew, uh, sent the keg to brewcon and i think it did improve over those three weeks yeah, i thought last night it was in top shape yeah. it was very nice especially once it got cold 
carbonation kind of rose up and I think carried a lot of that coffee aroma out yeah. with it. When they were serving it, it was <clears throat> far too cold. And my first sip of it, I thought, it did taste a bit yeah. almost stale coffee-ish, but as it heated up and the, the temperature came up to it, it, it really brought out a lot I more. I think the previous, the previous beer on that tap had been a, 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 a German German Pilsner lurker, so it was quite it was quite cold. Once we we turned off the refrigeration, but it's still it was still Took cold. So after the first few, you got one of the first ones pulled. After yeah. the first few were pulled, it warmed to a nice uh, you know nice state temperature. Anyway, we don't have any here to taste, but a few people tasted it yesterday. Let's go and take a look at what they said. <laughs> It's far too cold. Should I, I help myself? Help yourself. It's very cold though. You can do that in the toilet. How does it taste? Sweet. What do we have, lads? Kind of uh, milky coffee. Yeah, it's quite nice. The, 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 the coffee does right seem now. like a little bit old coffee. You had glass, man. Don't want to say it. That was Brian. Brian made the coffee. Lovely peppery, peppery uh, aroma on the nose. A sweet pepper in the taste. Nice light body with some nice dry aftertones of uh, the roasted malt. It's really nice. I think it's, yeah. The dryness has come from the rye. How does that, uh, a, a good spiciness too, how does that uh, rate chip to yours? It rates very well to me. Ha! It's very no, good. The coffee's coming out a lot more that it's cold we tried it a couple of days ago it was way more riced out than espresso you get now i think they're evening out with a little bit of coolness I want to let you get the espresso warm. on the burp almost <laughs> yeah it's no that's a really good way to get it but it, it's there it creeps up from your bowels into your nose i really love it like it's there to get the coffee and it's actually quite pleasant uh, quick, that it's not oxidized some coffee stars a little bit like Instant coffee or style coffee, it's quite nice fresh it's, coffee aroma. Uh, Fine head. I wanted to do like the last couple of years were kind of meh. Very like nice. Quite light. Push it out. You're right. Um, I'm quite light in the body. Um, uh, as well. right. Fairly sessionable. Not the like not the ten pints in a row pints, yeah, but uh, yeah, I could have one. I could have a pint of it. Oh, this smells good. Uh, I'm getting Roy. Coffee, lots and lots of coffee. More coffee. And for me, uh, there's a very strong taste of, or well, smell first, of chilies. But I'm told there's no chilies in this beer at all. When I taste it, I mean, it's very peppery, but chilies. Um, Peppery and chilies. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's a coffee porter. I can't actually get any of the coffeeness of it, the espresso, because to me it's very, but it's it's utterly delicious. Uh, spicy, warming, loads of good things, and um, you, as you can see, the glass is nearly empty. Um, the aroma is fascinating. It's 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 kind of smoky. It's kind of a burnt character. And then there's a there's an acidic thing. There's there's a it's a little bit vinegary, a little bit acetic, but it's also um, a little bit chilly, a little bit um, that kind of sharpness that you get for specifically from green chili skins, hugely in the aroma. It's kind of dry, a little bit of celery, asparagus, that kind of green sort of squeaky sharpness. And that's there on tasting. It turns greener, in fact. It's actually asparagus tips are, are the, a major flavor that I'm getting from this. There's very little of your traditional porter, your chocolate, your coffee, that kind of thing. But um, it would pass really well as a, as a particular sort of German lager or wheat beer. It's good drinking. It's very clean. The finish is, is absolutely, you know, bang on. Um, I really like drinking it. Um, it's just odd as a porter. 
I have no memory of adding chilies to it. <laughs> Where did I, so many people, individual people, Barman. ask me how much chilies? Barman <laughs> selling it. For some maybe reason, he was but... telling people there was chilies in it. Yeah. And I was having a discussion with him. I said, like, "I have to try this chili beer." I was like, "I was like, so many." I was like, "That's our one. There's no chilies in it." <laughs> there was a couple of other chili beers. There. Maybe it was like some kind of mass <laughs> suggested hysteria. Hmm. But I was talking to two people for about ten minutes, and they're talking about, "Could it be this chili? Could it be this chili?" I was like, "Can we try that?" Like, that's the one we made. There's no, there's no, there's no chili in it. <laughs> Which goes to say. A recipe can be different from brew to brew, and people's perception of it if can be totally you, wrong. If someone <laughs> tells you there's chili in it, you'll sit there and be <laughs> <onto your, onto laughs> <your fine laughs> chili in it. <laughs> it's very subtle. Yeah. It's very subtle, yes. Yeah, so anyway, so subtle. that's the tip. If you want to, uh, what you've learned from today, if you want to make the best chili stage, all you need is coffee, coffee <laughs> and <laughs> chocolate rye. So, yep. And invert sugar. Amen. Amen. So, to a rye stout with espresso and chili. Cheers. Without chilies. <laughs> Leave the chilies out. Or put them in. That could be nice. Kind of mole ish. Yeah. yeah. For the recipe, nice. go to chili.com. Chop and brew, chop, chop and brew, chop and brew, chop, chop and brew, chop and brew, chop, chop and brew, chop and brew with Nigel and Brian. <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs>